oceans rage, the kingdoms rise and fall. There is still one king reigning over all. So I will not fear, for this truth remains that my God is the ancient. None above him, none before him, all of the time in his hands. For his throne is shall remain and ever stand. All the power, all the glory, I will trust in his name. For my God is everybody and how good to see you and you may be saying there he is with his head in the clouds once again well these fantastic aerial uh, shots behind this aerial video is from uh, Angus and Fiona McCaskill they took it whilst they were flying around in their little light aircraft and you can see the River Severn snaking away that's absolutely a beautiful and wonderful and we've got some coming a bit later on in one of our songs when Megan sings to us later on. So it's great to be together and so you are welcome whether you're near or far, whether you're a regular or you're a visitor. In the name of Jesus I pray that God would bless you this morning and I'm mindful of those beautiful words from the psalm that encourage us to worship God. Praise the Lord all my, oh my soul. Praise the Lord all my inmost being. Praise the Lord all my soul and forget not all of the good things that he has done. We're going to worship God this morning so let's bless the Lord.
So it's great to have uh, my sister Wendy join us for this uh, Your Story slot this morning. Um, Wendy and her husband Pete live down in the New Forest, but since lockdown they've been connecting with our online services, so they're a bit like uh, members of Thorny Baptist Church at one distance removed really. Um, but Wendy's agreed just to share her story of, of faith with us this morning. Um, so Wendy, welcome to this uh, video and to Thornby Baptist Church. Um, you're connecting with us at the moment as church. Have you been a lifelong church goer? Um, sadly, no. Um, it was, I went from 13 to 15 and it was two special years really. I enjoyed going to church. Um, I did feel the Lord there and um, I, I did like going. I, I wasn't feeling I was forced to go once I started getting used to it and I also went Friday to the uh, youth uh, club which um, uh, I really enjoyed. I used to go after school and um, a, a couple called Priscilla and Michael were running it. Right, right. So, so what happened then that made you lose the habit of going to church or maybe even lose faith? Uh, well, I, it was a difficult, although I enjoyed it at teenage years and not having any formal background of it, um, I left school at 15, I went out to work at 15 and um, I was, I just drifted away, I just didn't want to go and um, the turning point for me was um, we lost a little boy at two and um, my, I was just very angry with God after that because um you know we mum and dad were our mum and dad were we just a big family church and i got told they were praying for him and um and we didn't know if he'd lived till he was a month old but then that's answer to prayer and then he died just before he was two so i had a lot of very confusing and i just thought he was an angry punishing god mm. so um i acknowledged he was there but it, he wasn't for me Fast forward a bit, sort of after a sort of quite a long time of feeling God was against you and, and angry and, and not something you were interested in, what, what happened to, to change your mind? Because your mind has been changed, doesn't it? I mean, so what's, what's happened? Well, um, yes, it, it is amazing. Um, I think I started to seek something, somebody, and I was very angry, as you know, because I used to direct my anger at the family and anybody else. And um, and I was seeking, I, would, I looked into Buddhism, I looked into all sorts of things and bought books and read them, but I wasn't going to have anything to do with God because he was just not a nice person and he was punishing and he, he was angry. And... And I, uh, I just had mixed feelings. I felt he was punishing me. I felt that um, he'd taken Sean away from me because I wasn't looking after him well enough. That's that was how I felt. So I didn't want him to do with God. So I was looking for something. I was lost. I was looking for something. Um, and it was just a gradual thing. It was God. It, God didn't let me go. I could see it now. God didn't let me go. Um, right from, I guess, those years at, at the church, although they were only two years, and Priscilla and Michael, who I mentioned in youth, they have been constant. And I know lots of people have prayed for me over the years, but they had, they were just there. They just walked alongside me all the time. We've always kept in touch. They've got children, same sort of age as our daughter. And it was just a gradual thing. And and God was amazing because I went into um, the cathedral at the Breckens and there's a painting there called Peace. I didn't understand what it was with that well-known one with baby Jesus with the lion and the lamb and all. Mm -hmm. And it just transfixed me. I couldn't move away from it. I didn't understand it at the time, but now I look back, it was God just drawing me all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think it was people were praying for me. And God just didn't let me go. I didn't want to know him, but he certainly wanted to know me. Hmm. So did you get to a time when you felt out of all that searching and that journeying that you needed to make some kind of decision for yourself? It wasn't a conscious decision. As I say, I was searching, but I still wasn't. 
I went to church once when dad was saying all of us and he kept saying about going to church and I moved around a little bit with my husband with Pete's job for a little while I went to a, a church where we lived it was a Methodist I think and I went and sat in the, I said to dad right I'll go to church just be quiet I'll, I'll go to church keep you happy and I remember sitting there saying okay God I'm here you know, what are you going to do now then I've come to church of course nothing happened because I I didn't want to be there I only went for my dad um but it was Priscilla again well it was God but it was Priscilla just out of the blue one day said to me um uh would you like to come to church and um she said I, th I think you'd like the evangelical church which was where we went when when dad took us as teenagers and and I went and um yeah I liked what was there and I kept going back and then you David which was God's timing again gave me the shack the book the shack I mean you've never given me a book before you've never given me one beyond since so it was God that's given good. pardon so no that's it <laughs> but I mean I only say that because it was meant to be it was God's timing and I read it because it's uh, people don't know it. I know it was controversial at the time, but it's about a, a dad that's lost a little child and he's angry with God. And it was just, God must have spoken to you, David, to give it to me. And I, I read it and there was a loving God. He wasn't punishing me. He wasn't. And it was the love that I found in that book. And I'd had Dad's book, Bible, by my bed for 12 years since he died. We'd even moved house. I packed it up. I put it back beside my bed. I didn't open it. But after I'd read The Shack, I opened the book, by the Bible, and I just went forward from there. Mm. And so you got to a point, I know, where you were baptised and uh, felt that, you know, you wanted to welcome God into your life I think that was quite a moment wasn't it when you sort of invited God to be close to you and a part of your yeah. life yes yeah I was going to the church and I was going morning and evening and when the communion used to come I used to leave um partly because I didn't feel comfortable partly because they sort of asked you to in that church um and so I used to just get up and leave when they had communion and this particular night I sat there and I know people say you should ask for your sins forgiven and I just said Jesus I want you in my life and I had the most wonderful experience um it was just like he wrapped his arms around me it was warm it was all around me and it was just amazing mm. and um that's how it happened yeah. and then I sat there and took communion no, but how, how would you describe briefly how life has been different since welcoming Jesus into your life? Um, it's just been amazing. I mean, the difference um, by trying to do everything in your own strength. Um, Pete, uh, my husband, as you know, had um, cancer recently and um, he had a tough time and a tough major operation, chemo, radiotherapy. And to have the prayer and to know the Lord Jesus and to um, just be able to go to him for the strength and the peace and that through that illness. I mean, he's come through and he's thankfully and prayerfully he's well now, but um, I compared that with dealing with Sean for the two years and my own strengths. And, and I just can't set how you the peace even when Pete was really ill and things weren't, treatment weren't working out right, we had such peace. Um, and they say peace beyond understanding, and it is. And yeah, I mean, God is just amazing. He's just amazing. And he's always there for you. And um, the strength and the, and the anchor and the peace that he gives is just, you can't compare it with living your life without him. Hello, my name is Kathy Buff and I'd like you to join me in prayer today. Heavenly Father, 
We lift before you all those suffering at home and in hospital from coronavirus. We ask that they may feel your loving care and your healing touch. We ask too that you will be with their families and their loved ones. We remember too all those suffering from the economic impact of this virus, for those furloughed and anxious about their future, and for those who have lost their job, income and security. We ask that you lift them up and that they will feel your very real presence and care. Give them courage, Lord, and help them to cope with the practical fallout of their situation. We pray for our leaders and our government. May you give them wisdom and compassion in the difficult decisions that they make at this time. Lord, we bring before you all those countries that do not have the benefits of our health service and our wealth. May your hand be upon them as they struggle through this pandemic. Lord, we ask too for a supernatural wisdom and inspiration for our scientists as they endeavour to produce a vaccine for this virus. This could help so many, not just in this country. And so we ask you for a breakthrough. On a personal level, Lord, we really seek your reassurance at this time. Help us to remember that you are with us always. We thank you for your goodness and your care and for the certainty of your everlasting love. I ask now that you join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'm going to click, we're going to do it slowly first and then we're going to do it quickly afterwards. I'm going to click, 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 I'm going to clap, 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 I'm going to click, I'm going to clap and praise the Lord because of what he's done, I'm going to make him number one, I'm going to click, I'm going to clap and praise the Lord. I'm gonna sing, 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 I'm gonna shout, 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 I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna shout and praise the Lord, because of what he's done, I'm gonna make him number one, I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna shout and praise the Lord, I'm gonna zoom, zoom, zoom around the room, 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 I'm gonna zoom around the room, praise the Lord, because of what he's done, I'm gonna make him number one. I'm gonna clap, clap, clap. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna shout and praise the Lord because of what He's done. I'm gonna make Him number one. I'm gonna zoom around and praise the Lord. Right, we're gonna do it more quickly now. You ready, boys? I'm gonna click, click, click. I'm gonna clap, clap, clap. I'm gonna click. I'm gonna clap and praise the Lord because of what He's done. I'm gonna make Him number one. I'm gonna click. I'm gonna clap. I'm gonna sing, sing, sing. I'm gonna shout, shout, shout. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna shout. Praise the Lord, because of what He's done. I'm gonna make Him number one. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna shout. Praise the Lord. Hey, gonna zoom, zoom, zoom around the room. I'm gonna 
not a zoo, I'm not a zoo, and praise the Lord. Teachers of what he's done, I'm gonna make it number one. I'm gonna zoom around the room, praise the Lord. I'm gonna click, 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 I'm gonna clap, clap, clap. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna shout, and praise the Lord. Because of what he's done, I'm gonna make it number one. thinking the other day, wouldn't it be cool if we never had to go to bed? We never had to go to sleep or take any breaks. If we could just keep on going non-stop all the time. Well, it might sound fun, but that's not how God created us. God created us to rest. And he loves us so much that he gave us an extra day in the week just to do that, where we could chill out, spend time with God and spend time with one another. That day is called the Sabbath. And today we're going to talk about what that means, what it means to follow the Sabbath and to be rooted in rest. Okay guys, so we're thinking about the Sabbath and the Sabbath is the day of rest, but also the day for making time for God and making time for each other. So, what activities do you think we can do on the Sabbath day? Pray. Pray. You can sing back hymns and worship. Yeah, singing hymns and worship. Go, go to church. Going to church. Like yeah, normally we can go to church. We can do church on the screen now, can't we? Yeah. What else? You can spend some time with your family. You can read the Bible. Yeah, reading the Bible, spending time with our family. What things do we like to do as a family? Uh, we like to play some games, we go walks. Go to prayer time. time. Yeah, prayer time, games, walks. We like going on bike rides, don't we? Yeah. And when we're out on our walks and our bike rides, what can we do? Uh, look at the world around us. Look at the world around us and be thankful for it. Um, what kind of prayer things do we sometimes do that is fun that you might like to do on, a, on the Sabbath? Craft, yeah, and colouring. Um, and if you want to say sorry, what could we do? If you want to we say could sorry, like, could get right. salt and write what you're yeah. doing. Do the salt first and, and wipe it away. Or you could um, write on a piece of paper, light a candle, and burn, it and burn the piece of paper. Yeah, and put it in water. Yeah. Right, so our activity for today, we are going to be making a Sabbath day spinner. A Sabbath day spinner. You will need a ruler. A ruler. A pencil. A pencil. A piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And something circular to draw around. And the last thing is a spinner of some sort. Yeah, we thought it'd be fun to use a fidget spinner, but you could just use a pencil, doesn't really matter. Um, so first of all, we are going to... Draw around our piece of paper. Draw around our piece of paper. Draw object. George has already done that, just to save a little bit of time. And then we are going to... Divide our circle up into sections, like a pizza. So what we're going to do next is we're going to draw or write so that things to do on the Sabbath day in our pizza circle. In our so I've completed my Sabbath day, it's been completed with drawings and writing. So I've got, I've got bike ride, I've put walk, I've put read the Bible, I've put pray, I've put movie as a family. And those are my five. Yeah, so what, how are you gonna, how does it work, George? Show us. So, what you do is, you draw a little line on which one you want to use, and then you put it in the middle, and you spin, and then you do that for Sabbath day. What did you get, George? Pray. Pray. So then you know that the activity, the first activity of the day is going to be to pray. Let us pray. Thank you God that you gave us an extra day in the week to rest and enjoy spending time with you and our family and friends. Help us to remember to keep the Sabbath day special and help us to trust you to take care of us because you are our 
faithful Father, and you will never let us down. Amen. Rooted in Sabbath, Mark 2, 23 to 27. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisee said to him, Look, why are they doing what's unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat, and he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. Hello, nice to virtually see you. Well, we are continuing our series of being rooted this morning, what it means to stay rooted in our faith during this time when we don't have access to the normal resources uh, that help us to stay rooted in what we might call normal life. Uh, we don't have our gatherings, our fellowship times, our meetings. Uh, and so we are thinking in this series about how we might stay rooted, deeply rooted in our faith so that we flourish during this time of lockdown and disruption rather than wither away. Um, I want to talk with you briefly this morning about the subject of Sabbath. Um, Sabbath is a, a biblical word, it just means stop. And uh, we've talked about this a little bit in uh, Thornbury over recent weeks and months. In fact, I've spoken on a Sunday morning not so long ago. And uh, over the last year, I've spoken at a Digging Deeper evening session on the subject of Sabbath. And so uh, if you want to look at the um, uh, the, the website, the church website, then you'll find the recordings of those talks still there. And I don't really want to recover a lot of that ground this morning, but move on to perhaps some more practical ideas about what it might mean to keep one day a week as a special time for God and for rest. Um, in our busy lives, we're all manically busy. Even I found during lockdown, we find lots of things to do. Uh, never have so many patios been washed and houses decorated as during this time, I think. Um, we're, we're all finding ways to keep active and productive. But the idea of Sabbath, the word Sabbath literally just means stop. It means cease, <laughs> rest. Uh, rooted, of course, in the Old Testament, where the creation story tells us that God exerted himself, as it were, for six days and then rested on the seventh day. Israel, his people, were invited to do exactly the same, to, to work for six days, but to rest, do nothing at all for one whole day a week. That should sound like the most wonderful good news in a frazzled, busy society such as ours. They were to, commanded to rest because they were reminded that that's exactly what God had done in creation. It reminded them that God was the creator and they were part of the creation itself. They weren't responsible for everything. They weren't in charge of everything. And by taking the big risk of taking a day a week off, they found that the world still turned. <laughs> there was still sufficient sunlight and air and water and food. In other words, it was an act of faith. If I do nothing for a day, will the world collapse? Answer, no. Uh, because we remind ourselves by taking one day out of our productivity and activity that we're not the center of the universe after all. Second thing that Sabbath was rooted in in the Old Testament was in the Exodus story. They were commanded to keep one day a week special to remind themselves of that moment when they were set free from being slaves in Pharaoh's brickyards. They reminded themselves by doing nothing for a day that they lived now under a very different master, under a God who loved them and who cared for their material and physical needs and their well-being as people. Not a despot, not a tyrant who wanted to work them harder and harder and squeeze every last bit of productivity out of them. But no, a, a God who said, rest, do nothing for a day. I'll look after you. 
kick back, enjoy yourselves. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful picture of God. And so when we think about taking one day a week to do nothing, I wonder how that makes you feel. I wonder if it makes you feel threatened. I wonder if it makes you feel excited. Well, I wonder how we would go about doing that. I think there's enormous value still in keeping Sabbath. In the reading that we heard, Jesus said, you were created not to keep Sabbath laws, but Sabbath was created for you. It's a gift to you. It's a gift from God to you. The idea of rest from your labour is a gift of God to you. Well, how would we do that? Many of us actually, in truth, although we might keep Sunday as a bit different, not many of us keep it as a, as a day of rest. And of course, we're all in different circumstances. So this will mean different things to different ones of us. If you're a single person living alone, if you're a couple like Mert and I are living together, if you're um, with children at, at home and you've got a, a family context, or perhaps if you're living in a household where there are Christians and non-Christians, there will be different challenges uh, to what this means for all of us. So there are no rules and laws here that work for everyone. But there's a principle, a principle of trying to live in the rhythm of creation itself, to live with a day a week for rest. And let me just say as well before I go on that it's different to a day off. A day off typically is when we do stuff. <laughs> it's when we tidy the garage, sort out the house, do some decorating, go shopping, whatever needs to be done. We do chores. Basically, it's work without anyone paying us to do it. But the Sabbath's not a day off. We need a day off to get ready for Sabbath, maybe. I'll come to that. But Sabbath is a day for rest, for doing nothing. Sabbath, stop. So how might we go about it? What do we need to consider? Well, I've got four words for you to briefly consider this morning. The first is one I've used already, rest. Sabbath is about rest. To rest on a Sabbath day, to do nothing, then you need to have done stuff to get ready for it. In other words, you need to have prepared for a Sabbath day. There needs to be food in the house so you don't have to go hassling around the shops to find some. Um, Merton and I have a golden rule uh, for, for Sabbath day, which is thou shalt not set the alarm clock. Um, you get up when you wake up, you get up when you feel like it. It's a day of stopping after all, it's a day of rest. Rest will mean different things to different ones of us, but it certainly means that we'll get rid of the stuff that draws our minds and hearts towards work again. For some of us, that might mean putting away our electronic devices in a cupboard or in a, in a drawer, hiding the work phone for a whole day. Will the world still spin tomorrow? Incidentally, if you can't hide your work phone for a day, then probably you're still living under Pharaoh in your heart rather than under God. Anyway, find a way to to make rest work for you. Get rid of the trappings of work, the expectations of work. Create some new rules, some new guidelines to free yourself up for a day a week. What a wonderful privilege. What a wonderful God to give us such a gift. Second word, unusual word perhaps, is the word relish. I don't mean chutney, I mean relish, enjoyment. Sabbath should be a day to enjoy the good things that God has given to us. It's not a day to feel miserable about all the things we can't do. But it's a day to enjoy what God has given to us. When God sat back on day seven of creation and looked at the world he had made, he enjoyed it. It's good, it's good. Look at the sun, look at the moon. It's a wonderful place. There's something of the spirit of relishing the world that we live in, of relishing what God's given to us that needs to penetrate Sabbath if it's going to be something that was really joyful. We rejoice in God's provision. That could mean just eating nice food. Again, Myrtle and I on our Sabbath day, we get up slowly and usually around 10 o'clock, get around to cooking a, a breakfast. Fantastic, the only cooked breakfast we have in the week. Love it. Um, we relish our food. We, we relish going for a walk. We relish just spending time together. We relish the things that we have around our, our home and in our small garden here. It doesn't take much to relish. <laughs> you don't have to go 50 miles or go to a museum or pay. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Just stay still and enjoy what God's given you. So relish, rest, relish, third word is the word reconnect. On a Sabbath day, when we take that one day out, that special moment, that special day, it's a wonderful time just to intentionally reconnect with God. 
even in lockdown, even over these last few months, I found it's very easy to fill six days of activity. There's always things to be done. Well, on a Sabbath day, we lay those sides those things aside so we can rest yes so we can relish what we've got yes but so we can reconnect with God that might mean that we spend more time just reading the Bible than we would normally have time to do we might spend time creating a, a painting if that's our, our thing expressing our heart to God we might sing or even compose a, a worship song we might spend some time reading Christian books or Christian poetry or Whatever, whatever, whatever we find connects us to God. It might be walking in the countryside and just listening to the birds. But there's something about a Sabbath day which gives us the space to reconnect with God. If we're in a family context, we could do that together, perhaps around a meal table. We could meet with friends and reconnect with God together whilst we eat. Well, there are all kinds of things that we can do, but the important thing is that we, we do it. We plan for it. How would we start? to do that. Well, I'd really encourage you to, to practice, try it, see what happens. See what happens if you dedicate yourself to the day that God has dedicated to you. Human beings weren't made to keep the Sabbath laws, but Sabbath was made for you. Here's a gift to pick up and take. Now, the New Testament is really clear that we shouldn't see this as some sort of badge of honour that if we do this really, really well, whatever that means, that God will be really, really pleased with us. No, the New Testament is quite clear that we shouldn't uh, try and keep all the Old Testament laws in order to keep God happy. Jesus has already done that. In one sense, Jesus is already our Sabbath day. He's given us rest with God. We no longer have to work to prove anything to God. Spiritually speaking, Jesus is our Sabbath. And yet, we still sometimes have that feeling at the back of our minds of, We've got to keep God happy. Well, don't do that with the Sabbath day. Let me just say this. We don't keep a Sabbath day to keep God happy. But because God is happy with us, he gives us a Sabbath day. Why don't you try and pick up that gift and enjoy it and see what it does to your rootedness in Christ. I wish you well with the journey. Let me know how you get on.
Well, thanks again, everybody, for taking part in this morning's service. Some really good message from David. I hope that we're all going to find out what it means to engage with Sabbath this week and into the weeks to come. It would be great, wouldn't it, to feed back how that practice has actually brought about change in our lives. Let's give it a go, as David encouraged us to do so. It's really good when folk take the trouble to tell us about answered prayer. And we've got a lovely little one of those now uh, this is bethan and with baby rory and this is what bethan had to say anyway over to bethan hello i'm bethan and this is um baby rory and um, he was born nine weeks ago tomorrow in um lockdown um and helen harrison just asked us to make a little film about um what it had meant to us to have people praying um, over the last nine weeks and when I found out <clears throat> I was having a baby I wasn't expecting that it would be um, in these circumstances and so um, when we got back from hospital I found it really difficult to to pray um, still currently finding it really difficult to pray firstly finding the time <laughs> and secondly just feeling quite overwhelmed and not really knowing where to start um but knowing that there are other people out there praying for us has been um a real lifesaver and um when there have been times where i haven't been able to and i've been feeling quite low about it just knowing that there are other people out there who have been praying for us has um really made a difference and the first day when i'd asked um helen if there was anyone who would pray for us um we really felt sort of peaceful and i could really sense that that um people were thinking of us um so yeah thank you everybody and um yeah it's been amazing um and please continue thank you Thank you, uh, Beth, and that was really kind of you to uh, feed back to us. It was wonderful. We've also had a message from Mike and Wendy, some friends of Dame Viv Tubb, and I think they live up country somewhere, and they are asking for us to pray for them. It's been lovely, by the way, if you're watching today, Mike and Wendy, thank you for contacting us. They're asking that we pray for them because both of them are having to have surgery in the coming weeks. So we pray for God's blessing and healing upon Mike and Wendy in the name of Jesus. We also bring the Merrick family, Clive and Alan and Stephen, that you would be near to them as they mourn the death of Marie. And we pray for them as they have the funeral service this week. May you be with us as we come into the presence of God to celebrate uh, Marie's life. Thank you that she's with you, Lord and bless them we pray in jesus name we also pray for hazel that you would strengthen her and keep her in jesus name amen amen also folks just to remind you that 
Uh, it's a prayer meeting tonight at 7.30 on Zoom. And the details are in the description. If you're watching on YouTube, it's just down there in the timeline. Also down there, if you're watching on Facebook, it will have gone out in the newsletter on Wednesday. Every opportunity, please come along. 45 minutes, uh, you will be split off into little groups and perhaps get to meet some new people. And that would be a wonderful thing. It would be really good to see you at 7.30 tonight. Just also uh, a, a brief word about the whole COVID thing. Again, uh, 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 an instruction went out this week in our newsletter to kind of talk about where we're at. We are at the moment trying to work out best how to put in place the adequate cleaning and right way of organising things to make the building suitable for certain groups to meet there. Of course, for us to meet as a congregation to worship is not possible at the moment in any sense, really. But we hope. Indeed, we, we pray that it will be in the future. But Mike Levy is Mr. Covid, as I said on Wednesday. He is brilliant at organising these things. So just uh, uh, any questions, ask Mike and we will continue to feed through information to you and keep everybody in the loop. But we are dependent on what the government is saying and depending on following the advice, not just the advice, but the spirit of the advice as well, so that we are good Christians and good neighbours as well. So, Mike, if you want to contact Mike, Mike at thornburybaptistchurch.org.uk. There we are. Well, my friends, may the Lord bless you and be with you. May he go with you this week. May you know his presence and his peace as you trust in him and walk with him in the name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. None above him, none before him, all of the time in his hands. For his throne he shall remain and ever stand. All the power. All the glory, I will trust in His name, for my God is the Ancient of Days. Through the day of night, overwhelms my soul. I will walk.